This is how to create an AI powered trading bot that's 100% automated and makes money. Some of the biggest hedge funds in the world are powered by algorithmic trading, Citadel, Renaissance, Two Sigma, but they're shrouded in secrecy. Why? These guys may look like your average bankers by day, but by night, they're bulk buying yachts. They're beating the market using some of the most sophisticated algorithms in the world. Channeling my inner wolf for Wall Street, I'm going to try to create my own. But what makes a good AI trading bot? Can anyone build this or is it just limited to hedge fundies? And does machine learning or AI even make a difference? I've been working on this for months, researching strategies, using different ML models and test coding over 600 lines of experiments. I'm going to break it down in just five steps. And it begins with building our baseline bot. Alrighty guys, so the first thing that we need to go on ahead and do is build our baseline bot. In the interest of time, I'm going to set a 15 minute timer and kick things off. The first thing that we need to go on ahead and do is create a new file and I'm going to call this tradingbot.py. We then need to import a bunch of dependencies. The main set are going to be from a library called Lumibot, which sort of gives us a trading framework. So from Lumibot.brokers, we're going to import Alpaca. From Lumibot.backtesting, we're going to be importing Yahoo Data Backtesting. From Lumibot.strategies.strategy, we're going to import strategy. So super quickly, Alpaca is going to be our broker. Yahoo Data Backtesting is going to give us our framework for backtesting and strategy is going to be our actual trading bot. We also need one more thing. So Lumibot.trader, uh, traders, we're going to import trader. So, oh, why do I keep hitting the wrong keys? Uh, so that is going to give us our deployment capability if you wanted to go and run this live. Then we're also going to go from date time. We're going to import date time. And then we actually need to create a couple of variables to hold our API keys because we need to get some data. So we're going to create a variable called API key. Set that to a blank uh, string for now. We're going to create one called API secret, also a blank string, and then a base URL, also a blank string. Now we actually need to pass through a dictionary to this Alpaca broker over here. So let's create that. So I'm going to say Alpaca creds is equal to a blank dictionary. And then inside of that, we're going to create a variable called API key and we're going to set it to our API key which is currently blank so we're effectively creating a, a dictionary key and we're setting it equal to what we've got over here and that's because we're going to need to use it in two ways later on so let's close that we don't need that uh let's go and set our API secret and then we need to determine whether or not we're going to be paper trading so for now we're going to paper trade because we're not dropping real cash just yet, or maybe we will. All right, so where do we get our API key, our API secret, and our base URL? Well, if you go to an Alpaca account, you can actually go and hit view API keys. And then in this particular case, we can go and hit regenerate, generate new keys. We can then copy this key. Let's bring that over here. So we can, that's our API key. We then want our API secret. Where's it going now? Down here on our API secret. And we also need that base URL, which is this over here. Cool. So once you go and generate it, it's going to disappear. So if you need it again, make sure you copy it, put it in a safe place. Don't share it with anyone. All right. So those are the main variables that we need already. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our broker. I'm going to set that to our packer and then pass through our, our packer creds. We'll come back to that a little bit later. Okay, but let's get on to our strategy. So we're going to create a bit of a framework for our strategy. So we're going to create a new class. We're going to call it ML strategy. Actually, we'll call it ML trader. To that, we're going to allow it to inherit from the strategy class, which we imported up here. And so this is going to form the backbone of our actual trading bot. So everything that we encapsulate in terms of our trading logic goes in sort of inside of that class. So we're going to create a new function or a new method. So we're going to say def initialize. Did I spell that? I-N-I-T-I-A. Yep, cool. All right. I'm going to pass through the same instance. Just going to set it to pass for now. And then we need the uh, on trading iteration function or method. Perfect. Okay. So the initialize, these are called lifecycle methods. So basically when you start up your bot, the initialize method is going to run once. The on trading iteration is going to run every time we get a tick. So every time we get new data from our data source, we're going to be able to execute a trade or do something with it. So we're going to effectively have all of our trading logic in here, all of our setup stuff in here. Okay, that's looking good. Now, what we actually want to do is create an instance of our strategy. So let's do that. So I'm going to say strategy 
is equal to ML trader. And then we actually need to pass through a couple of things to this. So the first thing that we need to do is specify a name. So I'm going to set it to ML strat and name it whatever you like. We also need to pass through our broker, which is why we set it up already. And then eventually we're going to be able to specify a number of parameters. So we're just going to set that to a blank dictionary for now, but eventually we'll come back and use that. Then what we want to do is we want to actually set up our back testing. So we're going to, this is how we're going to evaluate how well we're going to be able to run our bot or at least a guess of how well it's actually going to run. So we've got our strategy there. To our strategy, we want to pass through that Yahoo data. So Yahoo data back testing. Then we need a start date, an end date, as well as any parameters here as well. And our parameters are just going to be a blank dictionary for now. So we'll come back to that. But we actually need to create our start date and our end date. So our start date, start date is going to be equal to date time. So that's why we imported this date time function up here, because it just makes it a bit easier to create date time objects. So for now, we're just going to keep this pretty simple. We're just going to set our date time to 2023. We're going to set it to, uh, let's say, halfway through the month, uh, halfway through December. And our end date is going to be date is going to be the end of December. We'll say 2023 comma 12 comma 31 beautiful all right so these two start and end dates are going into our back test so if you wanted to go and test for longer or shorter you can adjust these we're going to bring this back way later once we actually go and do our final run okay but that is pretty much some uh, most of the admin stuff actually now done inside of our initialize function we want to create a parameter so we're going to create a parameter called symbol that's going to be a string and we're going to set that equal to spy. So it's going to be the spy index for now. Then what we want to do over here is make this available as an attribute inside of our class. So we're going to say self.symbol is equal to symbol over here. To actually pass this through when we go and initialize our strategy, we just go and create a new parameter and we're going to set that equal to spy over here. And I'm going to copy this kind of a little bit of a weird way to set this up if I'm completely honest, but it works. We also need to set self.sleep time. So this basically dictates how frequently we're going to trade. So self.sleep time, we're going to set this equal to 24 hours. We're not playing in the minutes here, but if you could, if you wanted to, you definitely could. I like sort of bring it up to a high level. We also need to set self.last trade or we'll create an attribute for self.last trade. So this is going to capture what our last trade was. So if we want to go and undo some of our sells or undo some of our buys, we've got the ability to do that. All right, so I've got symbol sleep time last trade. That is looking good. Now, what we want to do is let's just go and create like a baseline trade, right? So we're going to say um, if self.last trade equals equals none then we're going to create a trade and this is like sort of the backbone of how to actually build these trading bots we can create an order we're going to say order is equal to self dot uh, create order and then we've got to pass through a couple of variables here so we need to pass through first up the symbol so we're going to say self dot symbol we then need to pass through how many of that particular symbol we want to buy we're going to set it to 10 for now but we're definitely going to do dynamic order pricing and position management little bit later we'll get to that okay so we've got self.symbol we also want to specify what type of order we want to create so we want to buy and then we also want to specify what type of actual order so the order type so whether or not we want to market uh, a limit whether or not we want to bracket order i'll explain that a little bit more okay so that is our order now created but that hasn't actually executed yet so if i went and ran this we wouldn't actually have an order generated so let's actually go and just pass this order and then we'll actually be able to test it out quickly and see this working so let's go and how do we go and execute this order so we can say self.submit order and then pass through that order and then just for good measure we're going to say self.last trade is equal to buy because that's effectively what we've gone and done okay so we've gone and done a ton of stuff so let's go and test this out so i'm going to say uh, python trading bot dot pi and all things holding equal, we should get a back test kickoff. I am getting these weird SSL errors. You can see one right there. Let's just try that again. Sucking up our time. Not happy about this. All right, that's our back test starting. So you can see, take a look, it's all done. All right, and that is our trade created. So you can see that right down here, we've gone and created a trade. So it bought 10 SPY 
uh, contracts at a price of four hundred and sixty nine dollars forty nine. It went and had a total of four thousand six hundred ninety four. This is our tear sheet, so it tells us how well we actually performed. Kind of crap right now. So we've built our baseline bot, but right now we're just randomly buying ten units here or there. How do we make sure that we're appropriately managing our money? This brings us to part two, position sizing and limits. We are now on to position sizing and limits. So rather than just buying 10, we're gonna make this a little bit more dynamic. So let's actually go and create this. So we're gonna say uh, def position sizing. So this is a good part of actually building a trading bot, position management and cash management, absolutely critical. So we're gonna create our position size. And to do that, we're gonna first need to get our cash. So how much cash we've got left in our account and if you actually go back and take a look at our trade that green line is the cash value so you can see it started out at 100k and then when we went and bought it went down to 95k so we can get that dynamically using the self.get cash method so we can say self.get cash we actually need to pass through self into here so that'll give us our cash. We then want to go and determine what the last price was. So we can say last price is equal to self.get last price. And to that method, we need to pass through the symbol. So we can pass self. Is my head blocking that? I hope not. Uh, close. Self.symbol. And then we actually want to calculate our position size. Our position size is going to be calculated based on a metric called cash at risk. So how much of our cash balance do we want to risk on every trade? So we're going to create a variable called cash at risk. It's going to be a float and we are going to set it initially to 0.5. So then what we can do is we can make this available as an attribute. So self.cash at risk and we're going to set it to cash at risk. Beautiful. And then what we can do is calculate our position sizing. We should also set it down here just so we don't forget. So we're going to say inside of our parameters, cash at risk. Let's just put this on another line. We are going to set that 2.5. And again, if you want a riskier bot or a less risky bot, you can adjust this up or down. The heart's desire. All right, cool. So we've now gone and added that parameter to our parameters inside of our back test and inside of our strategy up here as well. So what we now need to do is calculate our sizing. So I'm just going to use the formula I've kind of always used. So we're going to say quantity is equal to our cash multiplied by our cash at risk. So that effectively determines how much of our cash balance we want to risk, cash at risk. And then we are going to divide it by the last price. So that's going to tell us how many units we're going to get per amount that we want to risk. And then we're going to round it down to the nearest whole value. Perfect. So this should give us a single quantity. So we can return our cash, our last price, and our quantity. 150. There we go. All right, cool. And we are going to dynamically set that when we actually go and place our trade. So up here, we're going to get our cash and just copy this. We're going to get it back by running self dot position sizing. Beautiful. And then we are going to specify that we want to buy that many down there. Now I like having another check. So I like going and saying if the cash balance is greater than the last price. So that effectively means that we're not just buying when we don't have cash. Then we are going to then execute the trade. Okay, so that's looking much better now. So we've now gone and sort of started our position sizing. The other thing that I sort of wanted to do is set limits. So I always like to set a take profit and a stop loss. So a take profit effectively starts a trade, which basically sort of sets a bound. So if we're gonna hit that point, then we're automatically gonna sell and we're gonna take some of our profit back rather than just leaving it out there in the market all willy-nilly. So let's go and set this. So we can change our type of order to a bracket, and then we can set a take profit by setting take profit price, and that is going to be equal to our last price. And for now, we're going to set it to 20%. So we ideally want it to go up by 20% to have a sufficient take profit. And we're also going to set a stop loss price, and we're going to set that to our last price. So this is going to need to change depending on whether or not we're placing a short order or a long order. And we'll, we'll update that in a sec as well, once we sort of get into the nitty gritty of the algorithm. 
our stop loss price is going to be 5%, right? So that sort of gives us a bit of a barrier that ideally we're, we're hopefully making more money than we're losing. Okay, so that is our position sizing. So if we go and run this now, we should effectively get dynamically sized um, trades, but we're still really going to be executing one trade. Please no SSL error. Find if I don't have a time limit, I just sort of drag on. All right, cool, that, that happened. So it looked like we placed the trade. That's our next trade. Let's take a look. So take a look. So this time we went and bought, spent 50% of our cash at risk. So we actually spent, or we actually bought 106 SPY contracts. We had a price of 469.49. The total value is 49,765. Tear sheet there as well. Okay, so now we've got, that's our time. I've gone now. We're going to keep cracking on because we want to build this bot. All right. Baseline bot's done and we've set some appropriate cash management strategies in place. But so far we haven't actually done any machine learning or used any AI. This brings us to part three, getting some news. The next thing that we wanna go on ahead and do is finally get some news. So this is where we begin to get to our ML component. So the way that we're actually gonna build this up is we're going to dynamically find out what news is happening over the last three days. And then we're gonna take that news and we're gonna pass it through to a machine learning model to calculate the sentiment based on that. And so ideally we should get a good feel for where the market is going based on that news. So that means that we need two key parts. We need the news and we're also gonna need a machine learning model. Let's start taking a look at our news first. So first things first, let's zoom back in. So we are gonna create a new method and we're gonna say def get the news and we are gonna set that to self over here. So we need a bunch of stuff. So we actually need an API to be able to get the news back. And that is why I created these values over here because we're actually gonna get the news back directly from Alpaca. So we can go from Alpaca, trade API, and you can just do a pip install. I'll include a complete set of requirements in the GitHub. So from Alpaca trade API, we are going to import rest. And this means that we can go and dynamically get a bunch of stuff from the trade Alpaca trade API. We also need one additional thing here. So we're gonna say from uh, time Delta, we're gonna import time Delta. So this just makes it a way easier to actually calculate the difference between days and weeks and time so on. We're gonna just use that now. All right, so let's go and create an instance of our API. So we're gonna say self.api is equal to rest. And then we wanna go and set a bunch of stuff. So we need to set our base URL, which is equal to this over here. We need to set our, uh, what else do we need? We need our API key. API, what's it called? It's called key ID. And we also need, my head's not blocking that, uh, we need secret, secret key, which is this secret key. Perfect, let's paste that in. All right, cool. So now we can go and call this API to get our news. So we can effectively go self.api.get some news. Uh, where is it? Get, get news? Okay, yep, cool. All right, cool. So we got news. So when we call this, we should get our news back. Now to this, we need to pass through our symbol. So we're gonna say self, these keyword arguments, yeah, self.symbol is equal to self.symbol. We also need a start date. So start date is gonna be equal, actually no, it's just start. And we need an end date over here. So how do we go and calculate these? Well, because we're gonna be back testing, we wanna get the dynamic date based on our back test. So we can't just go and get today's date. We actually need to get the date based on when we're trading. So we can actually go and do this. And rather than just doing it right here, let's actually just go and create another method to do this. So we're gonna say self.getDates. And let's do a little magic here. So we're going to grab uh, today's date, which is today with respect to the back test or to the live trading. So self.get, uh, what is it, get date time. All right, and so this is going to return the current date based on the back test or wherever we're actually going and deploying this. Then we need to get the, we're going to get, grab three days worth of news, right? So we need three days prior. So three days prior, it's a terrible variable name. Let's say three days prior. Okay, that's still not great, whatever. All right, so we're going to say today is equal to, uh, well, no, so three days prior is equal to today minus three days. So we can use our time delta method that we just imported in over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that equal to days equal three. So that will effectively give us three days prior because we're taking today, we're minusing three, math. Then what we wanna do is we wanna return today and we wanna format it as a string because that's the way that the API expects it. So we're gonna say today is equal to str format time 
it's like this weird set of str today dot it's here somewhere today dot get weird okay it's str ft time get the feeling that there's an error there but we will soon find out um okay so that's our daytime and then we want to set that equal to percentage year dash percentage month dash percentage day cool so that should return year month day as a string and then we also want to do the same thing for three days prior so we're just going to copy that and we are going to copy this weird method which doesn't seem to be doing syntax highlighting so that is effectively what we've got now so we're going to be getting today's day we're going to get three days prior and then we're going to return those two values then inside of our get news function we're going to call that so we're going to say self.getDates and we will uh, unpack that. So we're going to say today and then three days. Let's just copy this. Let's not write that. Beautiful. Okay. So today is going to be equal to the end because that's the end. And then the start is going to be three days prior. Perfect. Right. So that is effectively what that looks like now. So we've now got our symbol. We've got our start and we've got our end. Cool. So we've now got the news. Now, we, I want to do a little bit of processing on this rather than just returning it because it returns it like a jumble and I'm just going to show you how to do this. So news is actually going to be equal to, we're going to loop through each value. So for event in news, I'm going to say EV, not electric vehicle, uh, EV dot underscore underscore dict. Took a ton of time to work out how to do this. Underscore raw and then this should be a string. And then I love it when it's a nightmare to get and then a headline. Okay, cool. All right, that should give us our news, right? So now we're going to get our dates, get our news, and then format our news. So now if we return our news, return news, let's actually go and call it inside of our trading loop. So our trading loop is over here on trading iteration. So let's say that we are going to go and initialize another trade. Let's actually just chuck it here. So we can say news equals uh, self.getNews underscore news it is self dog get news yeah okay cool so and then let's print out our news perfect all right so now effectively when we go and run our trading loop let's go and run it we can run it by running that's weird we can run it by running python trading bot.py but you knew that all right cool again accelerator we shall see ssl error beautiful great let's try again this looks promising. All right, cool. This is starting. And what happened? All right, so we had an error there. Uh, it's self get knew that we had an error. Could tell. Let's zoom out. Do, do, do. It should not be double T's. There you go. All right, let's try that. String format time. All right, let's try again. Probably a seller. <laughs> Uh, I might not have saved that. Let's do that again. Okay, take a look. All right, so that is our news. So let's just wait for this pop-up to go. So you can see that we've now printed out our news over here. Well, we're pop, popping out with a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, um, so we've got all of these different headlines. So if you invested 1,000 in X on mobile when Joe Biden was elected president, here's how much you have today. U.S. senators, blah, blah, blah whole bunch of news. So we've got our news, but that by itself doesn't really help us make trades. This brings us to part four, bringing in the machine learning model, AKA the AI. We actually want to bring some ML into the mix. So this is where we bring in our ML powered sentiment model. So what we want to do is rather than go and write a new function, I'm actually just going to sub this out. So I'm going to change our get news function and I'm going to uh, get news method and I'm going to convert that to get sentiment. and. All we really need to do is import this from my Finbert Utils utility. So if you've seen a couple of my sentiment-based videos on the channel before, really, really similar. Basically, we're using transformers and PyTorch. We're setting whether or not we're going to use CUDA or our CPU. We're then taking the process AI Finbert model, which is an amazing model when it comes to finance. And if you actually go to the Hugging Face model repository, you can read all about it. It's a brilliant model, which has been fine-tuned on finance sentiment. So we're going to be using that. So we're going to be passing our news to the tokenizer, to the model. And then what we're going to do is we're going to effectively sum it all up and then take the highest result. 
So to that, we're going to get back our probability and we are also going to get back our sentiment. Um, so let's go on ahead and do that. This is all extra stuff. Oh, uh, we don't need this. I think I added that. My bad. Um, also, in here, I included a little example. So if you actually wanted to go and test this out, let's actually go and test it out. So over here, I've got two examples. So markets responded positively to the news. Traders were pleasantly surprised. So if we actually go and run that function, so we're going to run Python, Finbert, Utils, and this will all be available inside of the GitHub repository. You can test it out as well. Ideally, what we're going to get back is we're going to get back a sentiment, so positive or negative, and then the position uh, or the, the actual probability. So over here, my head's probably blocking that. Let me bring it over and bring it up. Let me just bring it up so you can see that. My head, all right, you can see that. So you can see that we're getting back positive sentiment and we've also got our probability of 89.79%. So this tells us that we have positive sentiment. If we change it negatively, so traders responded negatively to the news and were pleasantly, uh, were unhappy, uh, displeased. Let's set a 10 minute timer. Let's, let's try to crack on 10 minutes left. All right, let's go. Let's go. Um, so let's not screw around. All right, let's try this again. So now we should get negative sentiment back as well as the probability, hopefully. And take a look, we've got negative and we've got our probability. All right, cool. So we're effectively gonna be passing our news in the same way, but we're gonna be integrating that signal into our trading algorithm. So let's actually go and bring that in first. So rather than leaving it as get sentiment, we are going to bring back our function. So we actually need to import it up here. So from binbert utils, we are going to import get sentiment. Actually, it's estimate sentiment. Beautiful. Okay, so this method or this function over here is going to be used down here. And we are going to get back, what's the order again? We're going to get back probability and sentiment. So jump back into our trading bot. So over here, we're going to say we're going to get back probability and sentiment. And we're going to set that equal to estimate sentiment. And then we're going to pass through our news into it. Beautiful. And then we're going to take this probability and sentiment, and that's what we're going to return back. So now, rather than running get news, we're going to run get sentiment. Beautiful. And let's print out. Uh, so we're going to get our probability. And we are also going to be getting back our sentiment over here. So let's print out these and see how we go. So we're going to run our trading bot again. So this time we should execute the back, to, back test and then we should also get our sentiment back. And take a look, we've effectively got it. So over here, wait for the second one to pop up. So over here, you can see that we've got our sentiment. So in this case, it is 100%. And we also have the fact that we have neutral sentiment. So we're not going to actually trade on a neutral sentiment. We actually only want to trade on strong positive or strong negative sentiment, which is why we need that probability. Home stretch now, we've got our machine learning model up and running and generating sentiment, but how do we bring this into our trading strategy? This brings us to part five, integrating our trading signal. But this brings us to our final segment. We're actually gonna bring it all together and integrate our sentiment signal into our trading algorithm because we've brought it in, but we haven't actually made any decisions based on it as of yet. So let's go on ahead and do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this line over here and we're actually going to bring it out. So we don't really care whether or not our last trade was none. So we're going to get rid of that as well. We're going to get rid of these two lines. So really we want to be left with our order and we're going to create two different types of orders. We're going to create a sell order and we're going or a buy order and a sell order. So we're effectively going to short or go long. So this is really good. The only thing is we just need a bit of decision logic. So we're going to say if the probability Actually, let's start with sentiment. If sentiment is positive and the probability is greater than 0.999, then we're going to issue a buy order, which is looking good. We'd need to tab this in. The only thing is if we've got an existing sell order and we the market goes positive, we sort of want to cut that other one out, right? 
So we can do that pretty easily. So we can say if this is why we implemented last order, right? If self dot last order equals equals sell, then we're going to sell all of those existing positions. So self dot sell all. Beautiful. And then we're going to issue our buy order. And then we're effectively just going to replicate this. So we can copy that over. And bring this out. Perfect. We're going to say elif. The sentiment is negative. And the probability is a 0.9999. And if the last order was buy, then we're going to sell all. And then down here, we're going to change this to a sell. And then we've got to change a couple of things in this order. So rather than doing a buy here, we're going to convert this to a sell and we need to change our take profit and our stop loss price. So our take profit, this time we're going to go the other way. So effectively we're subtracting our profit margin from a value of one. So it's going to be 0.8 here and our take profit is going to be adding 0.05 or 5%. So we're going to say this is 1.05. And I think that is it. So we should effectively have our trading algorithm now up and running. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let's actually go and test this out. So let's test it out on half month and then we're gonna unleash it on the full back test period. So let's clear this and we're gonna run it again. Okay, so it looks like we're making some trades. Looks like we made one trade. What's happened there? All right, let's extend this out and unleash it. So it looks like we did definitely made one trade at least. We made a buy trade over here so we bought uh forty nine thousand dollars worth of spy over here it looks like the market went up which is probably a good thing how much did we make off that first one so we made 5.2 percent not too bad considering that just sort of mimicked the market but now we want to unleash this for all time so rather than testing from 2023 we're going to set it to 2020 we're going to set the first date we're going to convert it to january the first 2020 and unleash this so i'm going to save it and let's let it run Okay, and we've got a bunch of errors. So let's go and debug this. Uh, what's happened? ML Trader has no object last order. Did we use last order? Oh. This should be last trade, right? My bad. Alrighty guys, and there we have our results. So this is the tear sheet and this is a breakdown of all the trades that were placed over a four year back testing period. So if we could quickly take a look at the tear sheet, we can see the yellow line is the SPY index. So effectively what you would have invested or what you would have returned if you invested in the benchmark. Our blue line is how our ML strategy performs. So right at the start, looks like we sort of went into the negative and then we sort of came back and eventually produce some pretty significant returns, but then sort of crash back down, which I still think is not too bad. Because when you take a look at these performance metrics over here, our cumulative return was 234.46% over four years with a compound annual growth rate of 23.8%. Personally, I think that's actually really, really good. But what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna include all of the trade logs, including what you're seeing on the screen right now inside of the GitHub repo, so you can go and investigate this yourself. Plus keep in mind, the only thing that I do wanna call out is this is obviously paper trading, so it doesn't include commissions, doesn't include fees. So when you go and trade, be careful out there, guys. So I'm showing you how to build this, but when you go and deploy it, it's really important to, to remember that trading live is so different to, to paper trading. But it does give a glimpse as to what is possible with AI powered or machine learning powered trading. Cause over here, if you actually go and scroll on over, we actually short sold appropriately when the market went down, short sold, short sold, and the market was trending down. So we did get a cash bump there. Over here, we managed to get some massive performance gains. So we got some short sells and we managed to, to bump out our, our profits so or our portfolio value. So if you actually take a look at one point, our portfolio value is 537,836. 
Not too shabby if I do say so myself, considering that, that, that we built this pretty quickly. Um, but that is a little bit of a breakdown in terms of the performance. But all of this will be available in the GitHub repo. I'll link it in the video description below. One last thing that I want to give you before you jump off, and that is if you actually wanted to go and deploy this live, it's really kind of cool. This is the, the whole benefit of the LumiBot framework. It's three additional lines. So we can connect our trader, add our strategy to our trader, and then effectively run all. And that will run our strategy inside of our broker. And all we need to do is sort of comment out our backtest because we don't need that anymore. Catch you later.